What if you want to send out a sign request to multiple signers, but you actually don't know how many signers there will be? You might want to send out a sign request to all contact roles of a certain type, or maybe the primary one, or just uh, everybody that's a contact role. And you don't know how many contract roles there will be. There can be one, there can be three, who knows? Yeah? So it's going to be a dynamic amount of contact uh, of uh, signers that is going to be required. So let's uh, set up the contact roles here. So I'm going to add some contact roles. Uh, I have signer one and signer two, which are very descriptive names. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just going to add them as a role now. In this demo, I want to send it to everybody, every contact role. If you say, well, I want to send them uh, to somebody that has the role signer, yeah, that can also be multiple people, you can, of course, uh, adjust your data source to select the correct uh, contact roles that you want. Now, I have prepared a data source that selects all of the contact roles, as you can see here. I can uh, show it via the Sockle Builder. So it selects it from the uh, uh, opportunity contract role object. And I'm just uh, picking out the fields that says, well, I, uh, I want to have the contact ID, of course. I want to have the first name, the last name, and the email address, because these are the fields that are required uh, for a sign request uh, template. OK, so um, I, as you can see in the where class of my query, I only say opportunity ID, so I just want to get the contact roles linked to my opportunity. Indicated as before, if you want to specify it by the role, that's not a problem. You can just add an, uh, a filter here and say, well, I want to specify it by the role. But in this case, I don't want that. OK, next up, let's take a look at my doc config. I have created a doc config that is called uh, yeah, assign better config type. And let's take a look at the doc config because this requires the collaboration between PDF Butler and Sign Butler. So let's download my document here. What a PDF Butler will do in this case, it will actually add the sign placeholders onto the document. So because you don't know how many sign requests, uh, sign, uh, signers you will have, we are going to add dynamically the uh, signing placeholders to the document. So the signing placeholders, I want them to be uh, sitting over here and over here. So we know that this is going to be the first signer and this is going to be um, yeah, all of the contact roles. So in our demo, we first want to have uh, maybe the user, uh, the owner of the opportunity sign it, and then it's going to send out to all of the other contact roles. So if you just want to send it out to contract roles, also not a problem, but I just want to show the art of the possible in this demo. So let's take a look. And uh, indeed, so uh, we'll, at first, the first signer is going to be, in our case, uh, the primary contact. So if we take a look here, we're going to take this primary contact. That's going to be the first signer. And then next up are all the other contract roles. So we have, an, uh, um, yeah, we have, of course, we are printing the name of this signer. That's going to be printed over here in this uh, placeholder. Then we're going to uh, create a sign placeholder. And this is a little bit special. So let's deep dive into this one. I'm going to show you the configuration. Uh, this is uh, the first signer. I know this is going to be the first signer. So I have to give this every signer a number because we have to know it's going to be the first signer, the second signer, and so on and so on. So I know this is going to be the first signer. So in this case, I can just hard code and say this is always going to be the first signer, always. And then, uh, of course, I have to identify, identify the, uh, the merge field for the signer. That's this one over here, signer one. So let's go back to the document, and that's uh, right over here. So if I want to now add my, uh, sign, uh, my sign placeholder, it will sit over here. So the picture for the sign placeholder will come in uh, via PDF Butler. OK, next up is we're going to loop through all of the uh, opportunity roles via a table row. And then, uh, of course, I'm going to print out the last name of, uh, my, of my contact over there. So uh, that's then coming from the opportunity roles data source. And then I also want to uh, insert my sign placeholder. OK, let's take a look. 
Uh, and in this case, I decided not to put any signing number. And that's the right thing to do. Because in this case, I cannot say how many uh, records there, uh, there is going to be. Maybe there are two records in our case. So the signing number has to be decided by PDF Butler uh, to fill in the correct signing placeholder field. So in this case, it now already knows the first sign that has been used. So it will start counting from the second signing number, signing placeholder that is required. Little bit of magic, PDF Butler will do it all automatically. So uh, no signing number required. Uh, uh, every time, uh, for every record, uh, PDF Butter will decide on the signing number and will count uh, automatically the signing field that you need. So that's our configuration. Very simple one. Uh, as you can see, uh, I just have repeating this table. And in this table, I'm going to print the last name. And then I'm going to add a signing placeholder uh, picture for every signer that's in my data uh, source for the contact roles. Cool, that's done. Now, uh, let's take a look at the demo. Um, first off, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna uh, show you how to, that the document is ge uh, generated correctly. So I'm gonna do edit page here. Uh, I'm gonna select my, I'm gonna select my doc config and I'm gonna use uh, this previewer. And yeah, okay, it was already set up correctly, but now, I'm going to remove, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave this back here. So the configuration was already done correctly, but this previewer is the one that I'm going to use. So let's take a look on the generation of this process. Uh, if I generate this document, I would see three signing placeholders, and yes, they are correctly done. So signer one, placeholder one, that was hard-coded. Then uh, the system knows, okay, signer one is already used. Uh, unless you hard code a second time signer one, of course. Uh, and then we're going to loop through the list. So here we're going to say signer two and signer uh, three. So this is the sign, uh, this is the contact roles that were uh, selected, and they now get automatically the number signer two and signer three. If there are four, five, six, of course, it will just keep counting. That's what you can expect. Next up is we have to create a uh, sign request template. So let's create a new one starting from scratch. And uh, let's call it uh, um, signers by contact, uh, contact roles. The master object that I need is the opportunity. Uh, the data sources that I need is the uh, opportunity. Um, let's take a look, sorry, I forgot opportunity primary contact for signing. So it's a primary contact for signing. And the second one I need was uh, opportunity roles. Okay, that's this one. So I have my two data sources selected. Now, uh, how do I want to name my uh, uh, my sign request, I'm just going to select the name field of uh, the opportunity. Uh, no branding for now, no email settings, of course, that's other, uh, uh, that's other items. And then I'm just going to select the next one. So first of all, first signer that I need to uh, generate, that's my primary contact. And the primary contact was, uh, yeah, I'm going to select the contact ID, of course, of my primary contact. I'm going to select the, uh, uh, the first name, the last name, the uh, email address, and then I'm going to select the, uh, just going to go for, uh, for English. Uh, I'm just going to check primary contact. Okay, contact ID, um, contact first name, last name, email, and I'm going to select just use the English language. Okay. That's my, uh, oh yeah, I have to, of course, have to select a signing method. That's my first signer. So this is a static signer, one person coming from a single data source. Yeah? And now uh, on the second signer, I'm going to say, okay, same uh, signing methods. 
I'm going to say it comes from my list data source, and you can already see that in the description that it's a list data source. Uh, this one is a single data source, as you can see in the description. Uh, and I'm going to select this one. Now, uh, from this one, I need the contact ID as well. I need the first name, the last name, the uh, email address, and I'm also going to go for the English language. Okay, I have two sets of signers now. So one signer is for a single data source and the other signer is for a uh, list data source. So for the first signer, it will just uh, yeah, take one signer, of course. And for the second uh, uh, signing stakeholder here, it will take the list, uh, the will loop through the entire list. When the list is empty, of course, it will not select anybody. And when there is a data in the list, it will select uh, every person in that list. Okay, next and submit, all done now. Next step is we create an, uh, a pack in, uh, in PDF Butler. Let's create a new one. And I'm gonna call it a pack, um, yeah. Signers, signers by contact roles. The leading dot config is my uh, config type. Um, one and now save and the only thing I have to do now is add a new <clears throat> add a new add a new actionable. Okay, so I'm gonna call this actionable uh, contact roles. It just is a name. And then here it's uh, Catmus underscore sign to act dot actionable underscore sign butler silence so uh, i would suggest you don't type this but uh, that you uh, uh, that you copy paste that of course um, let's activate it and then let's go for the signers by contact roles that's the template we are using and the only thing i have to do left uh, have to do is save i copy the id of my pack and i go to my uh, edit page of the opportunity and I'm going to add my pack to my previewer. So that in the previewer, you can now select if you want to have uh, receivers or not. So I'm just going to add it here. Okay, comma, and then paste my uh, my pack. Cool. Configuration done. Now, the only thing that's left is testing it. So let's take a look. If we generate the, uh, the document, okay, I can see my signer. So I can see the two extra signers that I have. And now I'm just going to click the uh, uh, send it out for sign request. So I expect three signers to be uh, required to sign it. So let's send it out. Message was sent for signing. Now let's take a look here. If I uh, refresh this list, um, okay, refresh this list. Oh yeah, this one is already impending. And if I look at the details of this sign request, I would see indeed that there are three signers exactly as I uh, expected. So, and in the first signer it's Jack Rogers and uh, he already got the email. So this is how you can set up a dynamic list of signers.